delay longer. I think the councillor Chernow will be joining us very shortly. I will call this meeting of Council of the Municipality of Jasper to order for July 31st, 2020. A note, uh, yesterday was the 19th anniversary of the order in council which established the municipality of Jasper. Before turning to today's agenda and to the orders of the day, I wish to take a moment on behalf of council, the municipality, and the community to express our deepest condolences to all those who lost family members and loved ones in the recent tragedy at the Columbia Icefields, and to offer our heartfelt sympathy and best wishes for recovery to those who suffered injuries and to their families. It has been a devastating tragedy for those involved with repercussions felt broadly in our small community. I extend sympathy to members of the Pursuit family, many of whom are our friends and neighbors, as they too will struggle with the emotional impact of the event. I take this opportunity to also express our sincere appreciation and gratitude to the first responders from all agencies, from our community and from other communities, all of whom deployed themselves with the urgency, skill, care, compassion and professionalism demanded by the circumstances. We thank you all. I invite us all to observe a moment of silence. Thank you all. We will now turn to the orders of the day. Councillors, you have today's proposed agenda. And as I inquire, as I always do, whether there are any additions, deletions, or other changes to be made to the agenda, I will advise that I wish to add an item um, to agenda item four, which is presentation. So it could be item 4.1 and specifically when we get to that point in the agenda, I will invite Councillor Journeau with his prior agreement to speak regarding a recent Facebook post. Once Councillor Journeau has concluded his remarks, I will provide a brief statement and will offer other councillors an opportunity to add remarks if they wish. Um, so I would ask uh, any councillor willing to do so to, to make a motion to add to today's agenda item 4.1 um, remarks. And if there are any other additions, deletions, or other changes to be made to the agenda, um, please raise those now. Councillor McGrath. I move that addition, Mayor Ireland. Thank you. Hearing nothing else, I'll, I'll call the question. All those in favor of amending today's agenda to add that point. I'm sorry, Councillor Janot, are you voting already or? You'll have to unmute. Sorry, I was voting. Okay. All right. Well, I will call the question. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. And might I have a motion then to approve the agenda for today's meeting with that addition. Councillor Wilson, thank you. All in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. The minutes of the regular meeting of July 7th have been circulated. Are there any errors, omissions, or corrections required to be made? to those minutes. If there are none, might I have a motion please to approve the minutes as circulated. Councillor Demota, thank you. All in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. 
All right, that takes us to agenda item four presentations. Uh, 4.1, Councillor Journal. I want to begin with a heartfelt apology to all. My Facebook posting this past weekend was offensive and completely inappropriate. It was a serious of lap of judgment on my part. It does not reflect my values towards minorities. For that, I'm sorry. As a town councillor, I care deeply about each and every member of our community. I have and will continue to represent each of you thoughtfully and respectfully. I made an error in judgment and want to further apologize to our mayor, council, staff of the municipality and members of the community whom I may have inconvenienced. I promise to take this opportunity to grow and become a better person and a counselor for you. Again, my apologies. I thank Councillor Chernow for his expression of regret and for his apology. I assure the community that the sentiments expressed and implied in the meme reposted by Councillor Chernow do not reflect the values of Council or of the municipality of Jasper. We appreciate and respect that Councillor Chernow has confirmed that neither do those sentiments reflect his values, and that he joins with us in denouncing racism, bigotry, and discrimination in all its forms. As elected officials, we commit ourselves to a code of conduct which reflects values which include respect for all individuals and which require that we do not engage in actions which may be damaging to the trust, confidence, and faith of the public. In 2017, Council proclaimed its commitment to fostering a, welcome, a welcoming and inclusive community. And while we recognize, and as this incident exemplifies, that the challenge is continuous, we remain steadfast in our goals to, in our efforts to achieve that goal. The municipality is currently undertaking an internal review of our organization's level of inclusivity and what actions we may take for personal and systemic betterment. I thank Councillor Juneau for his apology and for his commitment to learning, growth, and personal and professional improvement. A sentiment, sentiment and a commitment shared by all on council and by the municipality of Jasper. So I said, I will invite any other councillors to make remarks as they choose. Councillor McGrath. Thank you very much, Councillor Journeau and Mayor Ireland. I'm very grateful to be having this conversation today and to once again speak publicly about the topic of our commitment to ongoing learning and education to both be an organization that can change, improve, create policies, and as an individual inspired to be a better ally and to, be fully, to fully acknowledge how I can do better, learn more, and step up. I offer forgiveness and I look forward to joining council and the organization of the municipality of Jasper on this journey of improvement, honesty, humility, and an inclusion focused venture to create a safer, more inclusive, more welcoming and anti-oppressive community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor McGrath. Councillor Demota. Uh, I thank you all for, for saying what you said and uh, I could not uh, express myself better and I appreciate uh, what Councillor McGrath and Mayor Island have said about uh, Council and the municipality and, and our um, vision and our, uh, our outlook towards um, uh, diverse and inclusive community and I really appreciate what you said. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Um, there appears to be nothing further. Um, so I will move on to agenda item five. Is there any business arising from the minutes of July 7th?
Councillor Demota. Uh, just to revisit the um, the minutes item of mandatory mask wearing in the community, and uh, last week, having been a, a week removed from my visitation to uh, Southern Communities in Banff and Cadmore, I felt a little bit more uh, on alert for them than I was for Jasper, just from what I was experiencing down there. And uh, at that point, there were zero uh, cases locally. And, um, you know, within the last two weeks, there are eight new cases in Banff. And because of the spike in um, the outlying areas of Alberta, uh, particularly in the urban centers, um, uh, Calgary providing a lot of visitation towards the, our southern neighbors and Edmonton uh, being a contributor, a major contributor to uh, Jasper. Um, I appreciate the campaign that we've taken on. Um, I've noticed personally in the place that I work at and uh, being active a little bit more, walking around the community, talking to people that I'm, I'm seeing a lot more mask wearing by visitors. And I appreciate that and I hope that that somewhat helps us, but it still keeps me from uh, being fearful of um, something uh, bigger happening to the community. So um, I'm not sure where the rest of council sits on that, but I'm, I'm bringing it forward just for discussion and see if anybody else has any views or uh, thinks that, you know, maybe we should look at maybe taking a step forward in the future if if things don't seem to um, become embraced by the visiting public as much as we'd like them to be. I had a good comment today from someone that, you know, we're not just protecting ourselves in our community and, and people from us, but we're also protecting visitors from each other. And, you know, I, I'm also fearful of people bringing the virus back home with them and having it contracted here and uh, I'm, that, that wouldn't be beneficial to us either. So it does have a great impact for our community. I'm concerned about our, our citizens, firstly. Um, and I think that this should be uh, on the forefront of discussion at every council meeting, um, just so that we are uh, staying on top of the awareness of the impact and on the, the possibilities where of, of breaks in our community. Thank you. Councillor McGrath. Thank you, Councillor Demota, for, for once again bringing up the, the subject of mandatory masks in Jasper. Um, I don't have much to add to the conversation today, though I, I agree with you that it should have a place in regular conversations and weekly conversations with with council being that it is of significant importance and we do need to keep our finger on the pulse of the mask wearing in our community. So thank you for bringing it up today. Any other comments? Councillor Demota? Yeah, I apologize for coming across as a little emotional. This is a, a difficult thing for me to grasp and I know that I've exposed myself in social media and I, I've been really active in talking to community members about this topic and, and there is a growing concern and, and I'm getting the feeling, not just from the social media side, because that's the most um, visible, but uh, the, the more I talk to people in the community, there, there are 1,600 members on the uh, COVID page for Jasper. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how many locals that encompasses, but I'm hoping that it's, it's mostly locals on there. Um, there are people that haven't commented or, um, you know, gave any checks towards liking any comments that I've made, but I've been approached uh, by a lot of people that I noticed that haven't commented that did see my posting and, uh, made comments. I've received uh, several emails and uh, particularly uh, direct messages via social media on the topic. And um, there are a lot of people that are in favor. There are a lot of people who have different opinions and different views. And there are a lot of people that have uh, additions to 
um, some of the information that we're putting out there. And I just want to say to everyone that I really appreciate the feedback that I've been getting. And uh, I also want to commend um, our administration and uh, our fellow agencies that have been helping us promote uh, a more respectful environment for, for um, people that live here in the community with their visitors. And I like what we've been doing uh, so far and how we're progressing. And, and I hope that uh, we can get through the summer months uh, w without any local cases developing. But I would hate uh, for uh, more strict measures to come in place because of uh, potential uh, cases uh, arriving in Jasper. And I just am very weary of that. And um, I just want the, the rest of council to know that as well. Councillor Wilson. Uh, I, I think uh, it's been about two or three weeks now that we have been discussing or we discussed it in the first place um, and the summer is going to get away on us and so I, I, I saw the quote uh, from somebody that shared an email with me the other day it says uh, it doesn't make sense to delay the issue throughout the summer so I don't want to just keep seeing this on the agenda I, if we are going to make a call let's make a call there's no harm in making it mandatory there's there's only benefit so if we wanna move forward with it, let's not just sit on the fence, let's make a move and make it happen and protect our visitors throughout the summer when everybody is here. Let's do it now, not, not keep putting it on the agenda, keep discussing it and going nowhere. I'm not here for that. Councillor Journal. Uh, some of you may have listened to cross country checkup on the weekend. Uh, I was driving, so I got to listen to the entire two hours. And in there, they mentioned that it is uh, two spe health specialists mentioned the priority should be towards getting children back in school, which is September 1st. Now, nobody's going to authorize uh, schools unless it's the numbers are way down. And that's where our responsibility comes in. We don't control schools, but we have a responsibility to make sure that the numbers are down so that the school authorities are ready to reopen the schools. And for that, I fully support masks and because they, they're proven to reduce the numbers. I'm not gonna stop it entirely, but they will go a long ways to reducing the overall numbers, which will allow us to slowly move into a normal society. Councillor Kelleher Empey. The education campaign has just started and I have noticed a huge difference. And um, I would like to see how that goes. I think compliance uh, voluntary is way better. And I have to admit this weekend, being downtown, I saw a lot of people wearing masks. I thought it was great. I think the signage up is, is showing people. And I'd like to see how this goes for at least another week and um, test it out. Councillor Wilson? If we wait a week, two weeks, uh, or, or even make the decision today, how long would it take to implement something like this, uh, Mr. Virgil? Yeah, it would depend if it's a bylaw or a council um, wanting to like make a policy. What we're doing right now is actually, we've just held off on all our printing, just to wait to see what is said today, because we're looking at like $70,000 rack cards to go out so as soon as we finalize this discussion we're going to be basically hitting the, the go button so um, we're looking for what council would like to direct a bylaw of course takes three readings if we want to go there so end of the summer really <laughs> yeah it would take a couple of meetings unless council called a special meeting so it would be at least two weeks um, for a bylaw but you know we could there can be things in between here and a bylaw as well that could send a pretty strong strong message Councillor Demona. The other, uh, to add to Councillor Wilson's line of questioning, I know that uh, we've had some help from uh, Parks Canada and um, they were going to embark on assisting us with our messaging and they had to go an extra step with doing a bilingual process. And um, as of last week, um, our campaign was to uh, promote 
the use of uh, masks and social distancing in the community with positive messaging. So um, I, have they embarked on, on going to print with that stuff or were they waiting for today? No, that's, or that's for... us doing the printing. They've agreed to give them out at the, uh, the gates as well. So we just want to make okay. sure we've, we're all on the same page. Um, but literally that is everything's, we've got some materials been produced and distributed, but that, that one item, it's such a big print job that we want to make sure we have that messaging. Go ahead, Councillor Demoto. I see other hands up. I've been talking a lot. I'll just wait to listen. Councillor Juneau. Rather than a bylaw, can we approach it from a culture point of view? In other words, uh, like when I go to the Super A and I see a big uh, tent card and right at the top it says, please. And I think that if we entertain that instead saying, please, I think it's a culture shift rather than a bylaw shift. Bylaw means you have to enforce. Uh, let's approach it from a cultural point of view and uh, uh, indicating the health benefits. And I, I believe, Councillor Juno, that is exactly what we did on July seventh. And I am, I am concerned about where this discussion is going and, and how we landed back here. Council and every councillor had every opportunity beginning prior to July 7th, but certainly on July 7th, to make a motion. Um, we discussed the topic and we all agreed that wearing masks is the cultural shift that we want to see. Um, we agreed, however, that there are other issues that need to be part of this discussion, including jurisdiction and enforcement. And we agreed and made a decision directed staff on an educational and awareness campaign. The signs that are now up at the entrance to town say, wear a mask in public. No visitor will know whether that is mandated by bylaw or strongly suggested, but the message is there. Um, what we want is the outcome. We want people to wear masks, but we are challenged in, in many respects and we can pass if we choose a business license, business licensing bylaw, but that may have the effect of turning business operators into the enforcement um, arm, which I think is unfair to them. So, so to say that there is nothing but benefit to be gained is not quite so. We may simply saddle somebody else with the problem of social enforcement. And in order to enforce on the street when we know that we have very limited capacity in bylaw already opens us to different challenges. So we pass a bylaw knowing full well that we can't enforce it. And how do we deal with, with that issue? We were, and I think remain, all agreed that we want to do all we can to encourage everyone to wear a mask in public places when they cannot maintain social distance. But to continually question the decision that we made two weeks ago simply undermines all that we have done. I, I find that to be extremely troublesome. I leave it to you. I, I will reiterate um, quite happily that I am entirely content to follow the public health direction of Dr. Dina Hinshaw. And she has said quite publicly that they strongly recommend the use of masks. I echo that sentiment. I want to see outcomes that are beneficial to the town, but I don't want to create additional problems which we cannot enforce and which should not fall to the business community to enforce on our behalf. So I, I don't know where um, you, Councillor Demota, wish to go with it. Um, do we review this this weekly? Do we continually um, question the decisions that, that we have made? Uh, I, I struggle with the process, but I fully support doing what we can to build awareness, education, and encourage in the strongest possible way everyone to wear a mask at all times in public when they cannot maintain appropriate social distance. 
Councilor DeMotta. Thank you. And, you know, I apologize for making this troublesome and, and I apologize if it's, it's uh, specifically troublesome for you, sir. And, um, you know, I, I'm going in the direction because I think as of the weekend, it was Friday that Banff had zero cases. And, um, you know, we have zero cases now. And I'm just concerned that, you know, at what point do we change our minds if we decide to change our minds? And um, there's growing concern in the community. And maybe I was addressing that concern via social media and, and um, you know, invoking other uh, people in the street for, for their opinion. Um, some people have made comments about leadership and instead of like trying to gain consensus and just going forward with it. I understand that most of the summer is gone already, and by the time we make anything go forward, it's almost going to be done. Um, I just, I'm just perplexed, and I'm having difficulties in just wading the waters on public health being at the hands of our visitors, in a sense. I'm also concerned about enforcement and ability, ability to enforce. I'm also uh, concerned about social enforcement. So if, if there is an understood mandatory rule amongst the people that live here and the people visiting don't understand that, I don't want to create a uh, resident versus visitor kind of sentiment in the community. And, and that's one thing that I think that we need lots of work on, and I'm not sure we're ready to, to pull the trigger on, on making anything mandatory right now. And also there are businesses that are concerned that if we did go in this direction, they would want support in providing masks for their businesses, uh, for customers that aren't able to enter, that don't have masks on them and have the potential of being turned away. Those are things that have been brought to my attention and I understand they're, they're valid points, but uh, I, I as we made our decision last week, our, our number one concern is is public health and the safety of our community. And I understand where you're coming from, but I I think it's it's okay to review on a weekly basis to see where we're at. And I think BAMP is doing the same thing. And uh, I don't see any harm in that. Councillor McGrath. Thank you very much. I. I believe that we have done and our administration have done a, an excellent job with putting this public awareness and education campaign together and uh, the you know the words strongly recommended um, is probably all we may actually be able to uh, obtain versus making something mandatory that we don't have the resources to necessarily enforce um, but I I do agree with everything stated by Mayor Ireland. If a councillor wished to bring this forward by bylaw, they, they had an opportunity to present a motion of that sort on, on July 7th. And I also agree with Councillor Demota, where we, we need to keep this on, on our minds and on an agenda. So perhaps on a committee of the whole agenda for the remainder of the summer, we have a safety update and we make sure that everything that we're doing and everything that we have done is in fact providing some um, level of, of safety and that we're, we're doing our diligence as the leaders of our community to make sure that the work that we have done is in effective. And if it needs to be revisited, we have it a placeholder on the agenda to, to discuss it, but um, we did vote on this. We did agree that seven of us that this was the best path forward right now, or sorry, I shouldn't say seven because I'm not sure exactly what that vote was. Um, but I'm, I'm satisfied right now, I believe that what our team and our administration has done has been excellent and has been um, very valued and appreciated by the residents of our community. Thank you, Councilor McGrath. Anything else? Is it? Go ahead, Councillor Juneau. Well, I believe Mr. Furcho mentioned in his remarks that he is waiting for some kind of direction from Council before proceeding with printing. My, uh, did I misunderstand that? 
Uh, worship through the concert, you know, no, it's, um, everything has been printed, everything's out. Um, the only, there was one item we were waiting for um, to come back and be ready to go and that came in and it was available to, to hit the send on earlier today. We just thought it's best just to wait till after the meeting because it's only a difference of a few hours between earlier today and the end of today for that one item. So 70,000 is a lot of printing and just in case anything changed, we figured we'd wait for that one, one thing, but everything else is out the door. Are you now subject to any hesitation in, as you say, hitting the send button? Uh, no, Your Worship, that's, that's fine. Just, it's only a difference of a few hours and that really makes no difference in the whole world of printing. All right, so that will carry forward. Um, I have no objection to, to the matter coming forward uh, on a routine basis at Committee of the Whole, if that is the will of Council as has been suggested. Um, is there any objection to that process? I see a preponderance of, of no objection, but not necessarily unanimity, but I think there is enough that that, that can be um, taken as a direction, Mr. Virtual, that that item get added um, for the time being as a standing item to Committee of the Whole. Thank you all. Um, agenda item six then, department reports. There are none, nothing is scheduled. Um, we have no bylaws for consideration today, which takes us to agenda item eight, information updates. Um, the arena and curling rink capital project update, a verbal report, Mr. Furchill. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. So I've invited Mr. Hutton here today to give us an update on that project. And go ahead, Gord. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. I hope my internet holds out long enough to get this report through. So just a quick, quick update on the arena slabs and boards. Uh, the pro project is progressing well. ProLogic, the prime contractor, has been an excellent company to work with. To date, their work has been clean, methodical, and well-planned. Now, we've met the following benchmarks or nearing completion on a couple items I'll mention. The dasher boards have been removed. The old cooling and heating header pipes have also been removed. Cutting of the arena and curling ring slabs is nearing completion. And approximately 75% of the arena slab has been removed. We have dealt with a couple of challenges uh, to date on the project. I'll mention four of them. I think I mentioned this one before, but I'll go through it again. Uh, during, the, during removal of the dasher boards, a large volume of historic construction debris was discovered under the stands. Now the debris needed to be removed from a safety perspective and while we were in the process of removing that we did discover some vermiculite or what we thought was vermiculite mixed in with the debris. Uh, vermiculite is always considered an asbestos bearing material under Alberta Health and Safety. So we brought a hazmat team in to do an assessment. They confirmed it was vermiculite. Um, we did an abatement um, to uh, remove all the vermiculite and the debris. Uh, we did incur a little bit of de delay on that, but on the positive end, we came back on the low end of the anticipated cost for that. So it was just around $40,000. $40, uh, flushing the brine lines also took a little longer than anticipated. Uh, the chromium levels were a little higher and took a little longer to get down to acceptable level. Uh, just for reference, acceptable level is one part per billion. So it took more than one flush to get through it. it. Took an additional flush and that also resulted in a bit of delay. Uh, we were in the process of excavating the sand and uh, soil underneath the um, arena, arena slab. Uh, the sand and the soil is good and we're gonna be able to reuse that material. Unfortunately, we did find a layer of organic material underneath the soil uh, it has to be removed and everyone was quite dismayed that we found that it uh, should have been dealt with the last time the slab was dealt with but here we are 
So you do need to uh, remove all the, the sand, soil, and then dig down and get that organic layer out of there. Uh, likely result in a small schedule setback as well. Um, in the curling week, we didn't anticipate this, but we did find a number of electrical runs that were buried in the concrete slab. Um, so we had to reroute the electrical wiring. This was done in conjunction with the other work, uh, did not result in any delays whatsoever. The uh, last item that we know we're going to have to assess and we don't really don't know what we're going to find is the soil underneath the curling rink. Uh, we should be pulling up a piece of the slab this week and assessing the soil under there. Um, we may be able to reuse, we may be able to leave in place, we just don't know. Uh, we really have no drawings or indication of what the, the material schedules were under that slab. Uh, currently the schedule is about two weeks behind our original date. We were shooting for an October 18th projection. Uh, we're looking now for a completed ice in around the 1st of November. Um, the unknown and unanticipated conditions have not negatively affected the budget. We're still within the thresholds of our contingency fund, so there's no concerns there at this point. And that concludes my report for today. Thank you, Mr. Hutton. Are there questions from councillors through uh, Mr. Furcho to Mr. Hutton? Councillor McGrath? Mr. Furcho through to Mr. Hutton. Just for curiosity for organizations like Minor Sports, with the tentative plan to be open on November, or to, sorry, have the ice in on November 1st, what does that look like in a tentative timeline for um, operating the arena and curling facilities? Is that a, a couple weeks afterwards or? The, um, Councillor McGrath through Mark Furcho. Uh, the first, the November 1st date I was mentioning would be a, a nice in date, complete, ready to go date. Um, I, again, I have, uh, as I mentioned, we don't know what the soil conditions are going to be under the curling slab. So I think that date is realistic for at this point for the arena. The curling slab, until we can do that soil and subgrade assessment, we can't uh, put a, a fine date on that. Thank you very much. Councillor Journal. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hutton, for the very detailed uh, and comprehensive report. My question was basically answered in the last comment about the uh, potential opening date for the curling room. Thank you. Councillor DeMota. Yeah, we had uh, penalties in place uh, for uh, deadlines with the, uh, the contractor and obviously uh, things that we've uncovered uh, were somewhat anticipated by some councillors because we didn't know what was below the ground. And um, some of us thought that there, we might uncover some things that would cause delays. Now, does this have any uh, effect on, on that performance uh, evaluation when it comes to the deadlines or is this strictly in our hands causing the delay so that they don't get penalized? Oh, sorry, Mr. Hutton through uh, Mayor Allen. Your Worship, through to Councillor DeModa. The unknown conditions, I do, I, we can't hold the contractor to those. Um, we have to have some leniency there. Of course, any delays uh, resulting from um, their own work or their anticipated work, their scope of work, those ones would, would be incorporated. And that's why we're requesting a bi-weekly schedule so that we know where we are going into every two week period and any unknown conditions or, or delays that develop, we can make a, an assessment of what, what's the cause, who, who's responsible for that. That's great. I appreciate all the work that, that you're doing and I uh, appreciate the update as well and, and the detail of it. And um, yeah, I, I like to, to hear more if, when, if and when you have time. So that's great. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Hutton and Mr. Perchel. Are there any further questions with respect to the update on the arena and curling rink project? If not, uh, thank you both for that update. We can turn to agenda item nine, request for decision. Uh, and the first uh, 9.1 reopening of the Aquatic Center and Activity Center. And I presume, Mr. Virchow, that Mrs. McNabb or yourself will be presenting that? Uh, that's correct, Your Worship. There, there has been a few updates to the report since the last time, and I'll ask Ms. McNabb to present on this one. Thank you, Mayor Ireland and councillors. So the request for decision um, that is coming forward to you is the recommendation is um, that council approve an additional net deficit of 115,000 to reopen the aquatic center starting September 21st with reduced hours um, as outlined in the report. And this will be pending staff availability and training. Uh, the recommendation also includes that council approve the additional net deficit of $70,000 to reopen the activity center starting September 21st with reduced hours as outlined in the report, also pending staff availability and training. Note that the cost estimates brought forward for the notice of decision on July 7th were based on a September 1st request. And since then, um, after discussions with council, uh, the recommendations above were adjusted to reflect the council discussion uh, last or uh, the last meeting, um, which was indicating that the fitness center uh, opened on September 21st and that the possibility of the aquatic center open on the same date. The um, options we can direct. Um, you can ask to direct administration to prepare cost estimates for other specific reopening dates for the facility, um, defer making a decision upon more information available from public health, health perspective or deny the request to reopen um, one or both of the facilities. Reopening the, the aquatic center on the 21st of September with reduced hours would require council approval um, to approve an additional $115,000. This cost estimate is now based on the fitness center reopening of September 21st. So it's including both of those because it's all coming together on one date. Estimates will be adjusted based on the outcome of the fitness center decision and future council direction. Reopening the aquatic center on September 21st with reduced hours until the end of the year would require council to approve an additional net deficit of $70,000. So that's the difference between the aquatic center and the activity center. Obviously with the relaunch, we would be following um, Alberta Health Services guidelines. Uh, we were permitted to open facilities, including pools, arenas, fitness centers, according to Alberta Health Services in stage two. The demands per service. Now this is one that's been kind of interesting. Uh, I, I indicated that I would keep tabs um, of phone calls, et cetera, from June 24th. So I've had staff keeping an eye on, on phone calls and recording them. And what we've found is, now this is, we're not answering the phone every single time because obviously if we're in a Zoom meeting or, um, or away with contractors, we're not getting to the phone calls coming in, but we've received 87 phone calls since June 24th for use of our facilities. Out of those phone calls, 232 people requested access to our facilities. Um, we have had one of the owners from the pipeline indicate that he would have a hundred people that were interested in our fitness center facilities and aquatic center facilities. So even if we estimated 50 people purchasing passes from that, I know with when the pipeline was in working the last time we saw a significant increase in pass holders um, for the fitness center. So if I go by stats on those phone calls, we had 
41% of the calls um, were for pool for the swimming pool, 27% were for the fitness center, 24% were for showers, 2% were for the climbing wall, and 6% were for the activity center. We have had requests for weddings already, small weddings, and um, birthday parties. So those are a few things that, that are coming in with the phone calls. Uh, fiscal responsibility. So the policy considerations for council on this item include the current working estimate includes $50,000 in revenue for the rest of the year based on less attendance and reduced hours. It was as opposed to the 10,000 that was presented on the last report. When the fitness center and aquatic center closed in March, memberships were credited back to the customers. So they were credited on their accounts. So, sorry, some, um, some refunds were made, but the rest are still on credits, which means that once we open up, they're going to use the credits back to their memberships, which means we may not see a lot of revenue at the beginning from local pass holders that have already purchased passes until those credits are used up. If the facilities don't open in 2020, then those memberships will be honored in 2021. So those credits to those memberships will then affect our budget in 2021. Budget estimates are based on the worst case scenario, given the unpredictability of the revenue to be generated for the rest of 2020. Administration is recommending that council provide notice of decision on the reopening of the aquatic center and reopening of the activity center at this meeting, July 21st. And this is to give enough time to recall employees who may not be um, who may or may not return to work, which could lead to positions having to be posted. We also need to do training on staff. So there's some extra additional time incorporated in there for training. Reminder just that not all full time hours or full time staff with, with these reduced hours, not all full or not all of our full staff will be returning, which means <clears throat> If they do return, they may have reduced hours. If that's the case, we may have people not returning to their positions or may choose to go get work elsewhere um, because they won't have the same number of hours they do with the municipality. So those are things to consider with the reduced hours. And I think that's it. Thank you, Mrs. McDab. Uh, Mr. Furcho, unless you have uh, Anything other to uh, to add to that? I will just uh, remind uh, council, but more importantly, um, any of the viewing public that on our agenda as well under item 10, correspondence for information, consideration or action, we have three letters, all of which address this issue and uh, of which council is very much aware and, and which will uh, help inform whatever decision we make. So I just want you to be aware that um, Although we haven't got to that stage on the agenda yet, um, those letters do relate and have been seen and read by, by councillors. Questions um, to uh, Mrs. McDab through Mr. Furchill, Councillor Juno. Thank you very much for the report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, two questions for Mrs. McNabb. You mentioned reduced hours. Can you give us an idea what they might be? So what we're looking at for reduced hours is the Saturday, Sunday shifts would be a one shift. The other would be uh, Monday to Friday would be at the fitness and aquatic center would be um, 10 hours per day. So definitely reduced from what we were. We were open from six in the morning until 10 p.m. at night and that was running seven days a week. So there's a significant reduction in hours. 
Councillor Chernell, go ahead. Yes, and my my second question was escapes me right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Councillor McGrath. Thank you very much, Mrs. McNabb, for your well put together report. And thank you, Mayor Ireland, for bringing our attention to agenda item number 10, because I find it especially heartwarming and wonderful that we had a child named Bodhi write to us. And, and I think it's, it's great to, to get children involved. And I think it's really important for our children and all of the residents in our community to have wellness opportunities. And I fully support this reopening plan. We all want to find a way to resume, resume a, a sense of normalcy and we'll return to the municipal facilities that we know and love and have the services that we, we desire. And it's this delicate balance. And just like every single decision that council has before us, we have so many aspects to consider. So thank you to the community for being understanding and for, for seeing that we are doing our best in opening the facilities as, as we can. And that the date suggested of September 21st in this report is, is a date that I support. And thank you. Councillor Wilson. My question is uh, maybe more directed to uh, Mr. Virchow, and it's uh, about staffing currently. So the staff are at the Aquatic and Activity Centre are on temporary layoff now, and they have been uh, for a fair, fair amount of time now. I know that that date uh, that you could have uh, employees on temporary uh, layoffs has been extended. What is the date that they can be on temporary layoff? Um, before having to deal uh, and make, make other plans further. Um, your Worship, through the Councillor Wilson, I, I don't have that in front of me. It's the first few days in October. So we're, we're within the window with this agreement. I just don't have the exact date right in front of me. Here. Okay. No, just as long as it's within the time frame, it was my question. Thank you. Councillor Trudeau. Uh, my question was pool capacity. Uh, I assume it's being reduced uh, like the amount of people can be in a pool at once and change rooms and all that stuff. Can you give us a, a sense of direction, uh, what might happen there, Mrs. McMahon? Your Worship, through to Councillor Juno. Uh, right now, the numbers we've calculated according to the latest Alberta Health Services would be 53 people in the swimming pool we would be looking at approximately 10 to 12 in the fitness center and two on the climbing wall, two to four, depending on if it's a family or, um, or separate people, individuals. Councillor Chernow, did you have a follow-up? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, through to Mrs. McNabb, I have a question regarding the um, income estimate of $50,000, the revenue estimate. I'm a little confused because your last report, as you state here, um, stated $10,000, uh, which was anticipating an earlier opening. Now we're talking $50,000. I wonder if you could explain that for me and then further. Could you um, build out a little, uh, fill out a little for me? Um, I realize that the $50,000 is, is really just your best guess, and I appreciate that there are a lot of not unknowns, but could you fill out a little for us uh, how you arrive at that figure and, I guess, break down your anticipated source of revenues between the various facilities and various revenue um, sources that we're looking at here? Your Worship, through to Councillor Butler. The revenue estimates, the, a good portion of that was estimated on new pass holders. So we received the phone call from um, the, uh, the contractor that is working or that is heading up the pipeline and he indicated that he had 100 workers. 
So if we even looked at 50% of those wanting to purchase passes, um, that was already bringing us up to the $30,000, $35,000 mark. So we kept that estimate low at that particular point. Um, we've also had numerous requests still from um, outside of Jasper, so Hinton, um, McBride, Valmont, um, local travelers too that are still interested in the aquatic center and being able to come for a swim or bring their kids or just their families um, to Jasper to swim. So that's where that extra revenue has come from. And, and truthfully, it's, it is just a best guess. Go ahead, Councillor Butler. Thank you for that. Are you anticipating, are you anticipating revenue from the activity center or is uh, really all of that revenue anticipated from the fitness and aquatic centers? Your worship through to Councillor Butler. No, we are anticipating revenue in the um, activity center once the programming starts. So gymnastics starts up um, and dance starts up. We have leases with those. So those would be, well, we have a lease with the dance and then we have a, just a uh, drop in not a drop in a rental contract with gymnastics. So we would be seeing those revenues coming into the um, aquatics or to the fit uh, activity center. So those would definitely assist in this. We're just not sure at this particular point um, what the numbers are going to be for dance, how much time they're going to use the same with gymnastics. So that estimate, we kept it very conservative. I will let you follow up, Councillor Butler. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. This is a, a sort of linear set of questions. Uh, what about um, Mrs. McNabb? Income from the ice surfaces are are we factoring that in, or have you left that off out of the conversation until we find out when those facilities will be available? Your worship through to Councillor Butler. We did not include any of that revenue into. Um, this request because that's a separate request with opening the arena and we know that right now we don't have an exact date on that so we didn't en en encompass any of that revenue from the um, arena. Thank you for that. I may have other questions but that's good for now. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. Um, I guess uh, my question is why are we reducing uh, hours? Uh, of the facility being open, um, th you know, that's not really necessary, I don't think, with the COVID measures or anything like that. And is there a mock schedule that you could supply us uh, that kind of suggests what, you know, when this, when the uh, um, pool and activity center can be, uh, will be open? Your Worship, through to Councillor Wilson, <laughs> what we were looking at. Um, well, first off, your first part of your question is the reduced hours came into the forefront when council was asking for reduced budgets. So that was a way to reduce our budget and be able to still try and open. So that's where we reduced hours to, to come back to. So with that request, the hours that we're looking at at this particular point are from um, 11 till nine o'clock for the fitness center and then for the aquatic center um, would be those same hours except for on weekends both the fitness center and aquatic center would likely be from noon till seven and the activity center the hours of operation would be from noon till eight I would just like to express disappointment in those hours, but uh, that's just personal preference, I guess. Well, your worship through to Councillor Wilson, what we did to estimate those hours is we actually took a look at our heaviest drop-in times and based those hours around our heavy use times. So we do have stats that indicate how many drop-in users or how many pass holders came in at certain times, and that's what we took a look at. Okay, just to respond, I think uh, I feel that uh, if we're 
relaunching this with COVID measures in place, I think more hours would uh, limit the amount of people exposed to each other, you know, like limiting people. Cause I think if we're trying to, you know, uh, pack the place and uh, between 11 to nine, well, you could probably spread those users out throughout the, throughout the day. But uh, I guess that's just comes down to money. And Mr. Furchell. Well, Your Worship, I just thought I'd better jump in here. Is the, the, um, the, the direction we were working under from Council was sort of how to get these facilities reopened with the least possible cost and moving, you know, what you've said is absolutely 100% correct. Um, if we had longer hours and spread people out, it would lower the risk but increase the cost. So um, the original direction was around how to finding a way to open the facilities for the least possible cost. So that's what we've tasked administration with trying to achieve and you know we can certainly rework the numbers and trust me the staff is 100% in favor of longer hours and and having uh, more of a facility opening but that was that was exactly what we we're working towards so this is the minimum required for getting the facilities back operating again councillor keller I like to reduce hours for start to see how it goes and how and if people are going to use the facilities. You know, we opened the daycare for uh, 24 children, and last week they reported they had 18 children. And one of the reasons is people are afraid to put their kids back in daycare. So for me, we opened with reduced hours, and let's see how it goes. I don't know if people like I talked to people and said. I don't want to put my kid in the pool yet, or I don't want my kid going back to gymnastics yet. So I think to start it slow, see where it goes and build from there. If there's huge numbers, well then it will be up to council to look at. But I think we should tread lightly and um, keep it safe as best we can. And I will be really interested to see um, how many people will start coming back to the facilities. You know, we just had this huge talk about masks everywhere and we're opening a gym where people are breathing on each other yes i know alberta health services said we can but here people can also are in close proximity and can the virus may spread so i like the idea of starting safely and with reduce hours and we can always build from there if we have a huge demand mr virtual through to Mrs. McNabb, I, I want to go back to our discussions two weeks ago, at which time the fitness center was up for decision and the aquatic center was on our agenda by way of notice of motion. And I was one who was initially persuaded that a joint opening um, might achieve some economies of scale. And for that reason, I was partially inclined to delay the opening of the fitness center to match the projected opening of the aquatic center, although at that time, the projected opening of the aquatic center was September 1st. It was determined that the fitness center um, would come back for decision, um, I think on September 1st, but with an anticipated opening of September 1st. And now the recommendation is that the Aquatic Center also open on September 1st. If you can, I'd like you to address what extent we could expect efficiencies. Are, there, are they really there to keep both of these facilities um, operating at, at the same times or opening at the same time? And I wonder whether there might be advantage in opening one before the other um, to give staff an opportunity to get used to the new reality. Um, I continue to think that the earlier we open, the better, although I accept that more lead time is required for the pool. And initially, um, had we made a decision today, it wouldn't have been to open. Uh, before September 20, pardon me, September 1st in, in any event. But we seem now to have decided that these facilities ought to operate only together. And if one is delayed 
for any reason that is a public health issue, does that mean the other one can't open? Um, have, we, have we put ourselves in a position where we are only going to treat these two facilities as one facility? And is that, is that an approach that we want to take intentionally? So I, I invite you, if you're able, to talk about both of those issues. That is, to what extent might we see economies of scale by keeping them together? And to what extent might there be a benefit of opening one before the other and trying to learn um, how to best adapt to the new reality of, of COVID operations? Um, Your Worship, maybe what I'll do is I'll just start with um, a little bit before that. We you know, wanted an earlier opening of the fitness center, which then was moved to the fall. And then once we had that date affixed by the council debate to September 21st, and we had our report uh, for these two items set for September 1st, we thought, you know, we could be, I don't know what's the best word to, to have listened to council's debate where September 21st appeared to be more of a favorable date and simply moved our adjustments to September 21st versus holding fast to the September 1st. And that's that's the whole reason why these reports have been edited to September 21st, just so we have it all in the ballpark of when we thought council would like to uh, support the opening. Uh, but we could certainly edit it back to, to September 1st if an earlier date's uh, desirable. But that that was my direction to staff, is just this is what the debate resulted in council. Um, we had early fitness center and then September 1st uh, with these two and then council had settled on September 21st and I thought we just best align all of this with one uh, date with September 21st but I'll uh, ask Ms. McNabb to answer your uh, two questions your operational questions on, on efficiencies. You want if you don't mind please. Mayor Ireland and council um, with regards to the savings there would be some savings by opening both facilities at the same time and that would be custodial savings. Uh, ultimately, you would just have the one custodian being able to, well, not one, you would need more than one because you've got seven days a week, but you would have um, custodial hours that would be specific throughout the seven days of the week. Um, if you open the fitness center first, you would still have those custodial hours. So that's where your savings are is by opening both at that particular point with regards to your opening dates when we first went forward to council with the july 13th opening for the fitness center our hope was that we'd be able to open the fitness center solely see how it goes try it be able to get these people in make sure that everything is running properly and efficiently, and then be able to open the pool approximately one month later. That would also give us time to get our training, our staff, et cetera. So the request, the original request that first came forward with regards to the fitness center indicated a possible date of mid-August for the pool opening. After those discussions occurred, um, we went to September 1st, with the pool opening, but still hoping that the fitness center was going to be open prior to the uh, aquatic center. That way we've still got that time, but it sounded like it was the request of council to meld those two and do them both at the same time. That's why we've ended up with the 21st date. Thank you for that. The matter is before us um, for a decision today, I believe. Which would suggest um, that we need a motion. Councillor Butler. Thank you. And, and that was um, the nature of my question. I. I thought in our earlier conversation around uh, reopening of the fitness center and understanding that we were then going to be seeing an RFD on reopening the aquatic center at the same time, 21st of September. I thought we understood that we would likely be looking at um, bringing this back for confirmation on September 1st, just as we have said. Uh, for the fitness center. I believe the nature of our direction on the fitness center is that uh, we will anticipate opening 
on the 21st, assuming that conditions when we review it on the 1st uh, still appear to be favorable. And I thought at that time that Mr. Furcho suggested or allowed that while um, that three week lead time to open the pool would be um, challenging, it was not impossible. So I'm a, a little uncertain about the request on the, the timing. I realized that administration would like um, a clear and solid date right now, and I'm happy to support the date of the 21st of September, but I thought we had the understanding that it would come back for sort of confirmation before we hit the go button, respecting that there could be still changes in um, uh, COVID safety issues between now and then. So did I misunderstand that? Do we really need to make a clear and solid um, go forward now, or can we not state our uh, support of the date of the 21st on an understanding that we'll come back uh, for a review of um, and any further arising health concerns, and indeed to clarify the budgetary items, which I think some of us are still struggling with a little bit. Thank you. Uh, Your Worship, through to Councillor Butler, I can clarify that with the fitness center and the um, activity center, it's a, it's a little easier, but three weeks is still pretty tight and, and for the aquatic center it would be problematic. And, and what we were talking about was coming back with a final decision on financing at that point. Like the reality is we do have to put some wheels in motion um, well ahead and, and for the pool really um, the end of to hit a September 21st uh, reopening when you've got to talk about uh, recalling staff and then potential of staff not coming back and rehiring. Um, there's quite a bit involved in we have to pull the trigger on the recalls with staff well in advance of three weeks. Um, just to deal with the staffing part, let alone the filling and the heating of the pool testing of the water and all that, that's a, that's a couple week process in itself. Um, but ahead of that, um, just given what we have to deal with with staffing, you know, the, the date is what we'd prefer. And, and we are going to have to, you know, like I said, pull the trigger on staffing recalls, um, knowing that if we have run into something, either financial or COVID related, closer to that date and council does uh, change uh, in terms of saying we, we, we won't do that date, there is gonna be some some costs incurred because we just, the timelines are simply very, very tight. It's just the reality of, of restaffing and, and getting something like the pool operational. The fitness center, uh, a lot less so, obviously. It's not undoable, but it's just one of those things where we're talking about that many people and that much of a facility. There is just some things we have to, I don't know what's the best word, risk manage, because there's no way to, to just hold off everything to that close. Thank you, Mr. Furchill. Councillor Butler. Well, well thanks, and I, I appreciate that. I, I guess I would just point out that the original request for decision from decision date until opening for um, the fitness center that was requested of us was one week and um, on the original RFD for the um, aquatic center, the window was five weeks. Um, and right now we're eight weeks from the proposed opening date. So um, it seems to me that um, we're not really too pushed for timing, uh, though I, I'm not wanting to put off a decision. I think that we're solid on the date of the 21st. I guess what I'm just a little concerned about is um, I'm still worried about resurgence of COVID. I'm, I'm a little concerned about um, increasing numbers that may make it um, unadvisable to open some of these facilities. And I'm a little concerned about kicking wheels into motion that are recalling staff if we were to then find that opening for the 21st doesn't really seem to be advisable. So, the, you know, those are the nature of my concerns, but that being said, I'm happy to proceed with the decision today if that's what council wants to do. Councillor Wilson. Well, we were given the direction from the provincial government June 9th that we could start moving ahead. So honestly, to delay it until September 1st and make decisions on, you know, what could happen in the future, we're going to miss the whole 
window that we could have been open throughout the summer. And then maybe maybe something happens in, in September, October, and then we're closed for another two two months. So like, honestly, let's put the wheels in motion. Let's give, give uh, administration a chance to prepare, to be ready for the relaunch that we should have relaunched with the rest of our community members, businesses, uh, and and everybody else in, in in Alberta, let's let's start pushing forward on this because stage two was June 9th and uh, it's now uh, or sorry July 21st. So I, I think we should stop dragging our feet and start moving forward. Give everybody a chance to launch and plan accordingly. Councillor Demona. As uh, someone that wanted to review this a little bit more regular as we're going forward, as things might change in the province, um, I'm with uh, Councillor Wilson on this one. Um, I think let, let's just set the date with that one and let's move forward. Um, things might change. And if they do, then we can adjust accordingly, like we did when COVID hit. So um, yeah, I want to help everybody out. And I think that uh, taking, taking action today to, to set that date well. We do require a motion from somebody. Uh, I'm sorry, Councillor Trudeau, did you have a point of order? Okay. I thought I had seen a pen in front of your face. Councillor Demota? I'd like to uh, motion to put, um, to stage the reopening of the uh, Aquatic and uh, Activity Center for the 21st of September. I think period. I was gonna say pending the uh, province, but if they change things, then we'll have to adjust anyway. So just go with um, administration's recommendations in the option for the uh, opening to coincide with the fitness center. Um, well, there are two recommendations um, and well, three options, two recommendations, um, one with a net deficit of 115,000 and one with a, a Net deficit of seventy thousand, both for September twenty first with reduced hours. So I, I think we have to give some direction with respect to um, the the quantum of the of the deficit that we're going to approve. That's fairly critical for administration to understand that. Right. So collectively, it's a hundred and eighty five thousand dollar net deficit reopening with reduce hours if we want to open the aquatic center and the activity center. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I was misreading. So you're referring to a recommendation one that would prove the additional net deficit of 150,000 to open the aquatic center starting September 21? Is That's that 115, correct? Yes. Okay, I thought you said 150. 115. I, I do have a point of uh, actually a question on the seventy thousand uh, dollars for Mrs. McNabb, uh, if that's okay through you, sir. Yes. Is the seventy thousand, uh, Mrs. McNabb? Is that entirely uh, administrative costs, and that's anticipating no gained uh, recovery in uh, extra uh, revenue upon what's anticipated through dance and gymnastics? Your Worship, through to Councillor Demota, um, it is it is staff related, so that's a subject that'll be brought in camera. Okay, so that's seventy thousand over three months, basically, just over three months. That's right. Okay. Councillor Butler. Your Worship, we've been talking about the pool primarily. I would like to suggest and request that the motion be split. Um, I have 
concerns that we uh, haven't really got to yet around the timing on the opening of the activity center. Um, I, I would like to query whether opening the activity center until hockey and curling is available makes any kind of sense at all. I don't think we need to open the activity center um, just to um, make the gymnastics studio and the dance studio available. That's honestly just a question of unlocking a door. So I, I have concerns around that and I don't really like to see the motions um, connected. I would like to request that there be two separate motions. And I wonder um, Councillor Moda's uh, view on that since he proposed the motion. Well, and, and in fairness, uh, it was perhaps my articulation of the question that, that raised doubts in your mind, but I had intended to restrict it to the first bullet point, and, and I thought that Councillor Demota had confirmed that his motion is restricted to um, the recommendation regarding opening of the aquatic center and not the activity center. So just oh, the, the $115,000 item, and we will come yeah. back, as you suggest, to the other one. And if I didn't right. state that clearly, I apologize. No, I missed the memo. Sorry, thank you. Okay, so maybe I should clarify my intention. I appreciate all the extra information, and I do. Uh, I am on side with with Mr. with Councillor Butler's suggestion of uh, deferring the the second uh, motion on the on the activity center, maybe to get a little bit more clarification after we deal with the with the aquatic center. But I, I motion um, my motion is for the uh, to open the. Uh, the aquatic center in conjunction with the fitness center as of September 21st. All right, so that is that is the motion that is before us. No motion with respect to the activity center. Um, it is related only to the aquatic center for September 21st. Uh, with the approval of an additional de deficit of $115,000 and reduced hours. That is the motion. Any further debate regarding that motion? I see no hands, given lots of time for internet lag. Um, all right, I will call the question. All in favor? Opposed, that motion is carried. Councillor Demota. I don't mean to put you on the spot and you don't have to answer, but uh, like last time something happened like this and I didn't understand why you voted against the motion. Was it be particularly because of the date or you just don't feel like it's, it's right to do so or um, maybe I missed the, the argument on, on why you're opposed. I am in favor of an earlier opening. Oh, okay, that's good. The fitness center okay. and, and the right. center. Okay, good, all right. That leaves us then with the question of the activity center. So are there further questions then? Uh, I know Councillor Butler, you had some, I thought, with respect to the activity center. Not to put you on the spot, but I um, I don't know that I can state it differently than I did. I I have a hard time understanding, honestly, what is there to be opened, uh, what is would be accomplished by opening and staffing the activity center when there are essentially no public activities there other than those of um, tenants, the, uh, the dance studio and the, um, and the um, sorry, the gymnastics, um, both which I think have said that they can manage if, if they can simply get into the building. Um, and uh, it seems to me that until the ice services are ready and we can see something approaching sort of normal activities resuming there, I don't know honestly, why this is even a question at this point. So I would suggest that we simply defer this question and come back to it when we have a better idea of the uh, timing on the ice surfaces. 
Thank you, Councillor Butler, Councillor Wilson, and then Councillor Juneau. Uh, I think you're leaving out uh, Glenda's. Um, she has the right to, I think, operate uh, if it's you know if it seems feasible. Uh, sure, her clients are most often people uh, at the arena, but just um, off the top of my head, if there's construction workers there, she then has a chance to serve them. Um, she has she's been shut down since uh, yeah March. Um, I, I think we owe it to her as, as our tenant to be uh, to give her the opportunity and not just uh, wait and see her. Mr. Furchell? Um, Your Worship, as Council is debating, um, if, if Council chooses a later date than September 21st uh, for the activity center, back to, you know, Councillor Wilson's earlier um, discussion around our restaffing agreement uh, comes into play and, and so does some other positions that will um, have to be dealt with. And um, there is then, if there's a desire to have the facility closed later, um, that clear direction because we do have um, requests for other events, funerals, um, get-togethers or whatnot that come for the use of the facility. So we'd have to know that we either support or deny those types of requests as well. And it's like, you know, handing the keys to those groups to use those particular rooms only. And then, you know, there is still a few things around that. So um, if council chooses to do anything other than what we have on the table here, I'd just say, um, give us that direction, what that might be, and we'll, we'll take that away and, and reformat um, the finances and the report. A bit. I will return uh, first to Councillor Journal and then Councillor McGrath. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I support the suggestion motion recommendation by Councillor Butler. I think if we can save the taxpayers some money, we should. And uh, this is a case here. Uh, uh, we'd like to defer this. We're in July 21st, so if we defer it for a month, we'll have a better idea of what the revenues will be for our rate payers and whether the ability to pay taxes will be better known and uh, you know we can we can we don't have to make that decision today and I think we should postpone it till there is a need in the meantime we'll be saving the taxpayers some money. Uh, Councillor McGrath and then Councillor Demota. Thank you very much, Mayor Ireland. My question is for Mr. Furcho. I'm not sure if I, I missed anything. I was not in attendance last week and um, there was reference to um, staffing costs and something in camera. Is Do I have the whole picture in front of me or have I? should I wait to get more information in camera later today when we meet? Is there, is there more information to come or is this it? Um, you worship through to Councillor McGrath. It's not you didn't miss anything. Some of this would be discussed in camera uh, today as well. Arguably, okay. it would have been nice to have that discussion earlier, but we've recalculated based on a September 21st date. Um, but there okay. is just the dollar values are attached to just some other things as well as what's on the table here with staffing and. and Thank you, Councillor Demore. Yeah, my my other thing too is. We have an opportunity for some bookings, uh, whether late September, October, and things of those sorts with construction going on in the arena. I don't know how, other than funerals maybe, or, or uh, uh, similar types of uh, get togethers, uh, where we wouldn't necessarily make a lot of revenue, but um, you know, there's, there's a potential for maybe not getting any revenue because of construction, but there's also the potential of the message that we're closed indefinitely um, to people that might want to book in there. So if we do have an opening date, we might have the potential to recover some of that cost of the $70,000. So if that's mainly payroll related, if we can make some of that back in revenue so the, the hit isn't as hard, that's something that we don't know and we can't anticipate. So that's something to consider. And, um, you know, I, I kind of like the direction that Councillor Wilson was going in, in helping support our tenant. And, and also the crews to make it easier on them, uh, you know, while working in the building. I don't want to take away from any of the other of the businesses in the community, but also providing, you know, uh, staff and uh, other users of other facilities to maybe uh, have some access to other services within our complex. 
to be considered. Anyway, those are just ideas that I'm throwing around right now as I'm thinking about this process. Councillor Keller Renthi, is your hand up? Sorry about that. Um, no, I'm talking to the uh, board on some of the board from gymnastics, and they were saying that they'd like to start back in October. So um, maybe the activity center opens early October, and that way, then you know, if the um, hockey is back in the first of November, dance is back, uh, gymnastics is back. I'm not sure if darts will be happening or not up in the curling rink. They're normally come back around the 1st of October. Thank you. Councillor DeModa. I would like to make, to suggest to defer this uh, to their next regular meeting, have a discussion on it, uh, maybe at, at uh, Committee of the Whole. I'd like to hear some more of the uh, maybe the in-camera discussions on um, uh, human resources, payroll and things like that, that we can't discuss publicly and those impacts on our decision-making. Uh, I'd like more information on that. So as of one of the options uh, within the recommendations, I would like to recommend a deferral till the next regular meeting. And that still gives us enough time to make uh, an informed decision. I think that is consistent with uh, Councillor Butler's suggestion, although I'm not so sure about um, discussing those details in, in an in-camera HR committee, but deferral generally was suggested. Uh, but, but I'm not sure what uh, deferral motion I might be dealing with at the moment. Well, wasn't a motion to defer. I was just we have an option to defer if we don't we put the motion forward today. And I wasn't the, I wasn't the one that said to discuss it in camera, but uh, on two occasions today, I've already heard that there are um, personnel implications. So that's why I thought that we weren't allowed to discuss those in public. And I thought someone mentioned that we, we should discuss those in camera. So that's all I was referring to. Well, certainly there are financial implications. I'm not sure that we have to get as deep as, as personnel, but understood. Councillor McGrath, did I see your hand up? Thank you, Mayor Ireland. I, I too agree with the deferral until the next regular meeting of August 4th. I um, believe that today I don't have enough information to make an informed decision. Mr. Virchel. Um, Your Worship, that certainly is good for, for administration as well. And it's October the 4th, so um, we'd be looking at an opening date prior to October the 4th um, in order to avoid some other complications as well with the facility. So, um, but anyway, that a deferral um, to the next regular would, would certainly work for administration as well. Councillor Wilson. If we're talking about a week, like September 21st to October 4th, like. Why even separate these things? Councillor Butler? Because we're concerned about cost, we're concerned about um, appropriate, responsible spending of taxpayers' dollars. I asked some questions earlier around um, revenue um, projections, the $50,000 revenue projections that, that was provided and was told that basically all of those revenue projections accrued to the fitness and aquatic center. And so I'm seeing a $70,000 um, bill to the taxpayers for opening for what amounts to, um, what would that be, three and a half months um, and no offsetting income potential, which is because we don't really have any services to offer. Um, so I think it's a pretty clear question whether it is um, fiscally responsible to open the, fit, the uh, activity center on the 21st uh, for a $70,000 additional cost to the taxpayer. So I think it's fair 
to raise these questions and I think it is very responsible to come back to it. So we're not putting it off indefinitely. Uh, we can revisit this uh, at our next regular meeting and see if we can't uh, find a little more clarity as to whether reopening the activity center prior to the availability of the eye services makes sense or not. Councillor Demota. Well, this might help the discussion and I, I thank uh, Councillor Wilson for bringing that up. Like, and okay, so I'm sorry if I missed it. I'm just trying to see how I, I didn't catch it, but what would be the difference of the one week? So are we still looking at $70,000 if we're, or is it gonna be $65,000 if we open up October 1st? Like it's not a $70,000 hit for the one week. So when I asked the question, is it $70,000 for the three or so months? That's what it was. So if it's a matter of $2,000, like I, I'm with Scott, like why are we having this discussion? I guess so, that's a question to administration uh, through you, Mr. Uh, Mayor Allen. Um, your Worship, through to Councillor DeMoto, like I, I don't have that in front of me, what the difference that would make. Um, a lot of these costs are, um, you know, larger costs that are, that, that wouldn't make a lot of difference. Um, you know, when we talk about the difference um, with hiring and, and whatnot, it's my biggest state of concern is, is prior to the October 4th date um, is my number one and September 21st to October 4th is, is kind of what I was thinking with the discussion might be unless council chose to open it earlier than September 21st um, might be the other thing, but um, like I said, it's up to council, but we certainly um, could provide more detailed information at, at a, after a, coming back with, with some direction on what council would like to see. Councillor Journeau, did you have your hand up earlier? I thought I saw it. Yes, please. Thank you very much. I agree with Councillor Butler. Fiscally, it's the responsible thing to do. And that's what we have to do firstly. We have to look after the taxpayers. And, uh, you know, yeah, I agree one week, one way or the other. I think uh, we're more or less looking at the whole month of October because we won't have anything to offer. So, uh, you know, uh, the responsible thing to do is, is reduce costs for the to the taxpayer. Thank you. Councillor Butler, did I see your hand again? Uh, I think that uh, Councillor Janot um, made the point that I was, I, I certainly haven't meant to suggest that delaying opening from the 21st to October 1st or something represented a savings in itself. Of itself. It's the overall question of um, when opening makes sense relative to the services we ha would have available to offer. That is the conversation I think that needs to be had. And since there seem to be implications around contracts and personnel issues, I think it is appropriate to delay until we've been able to have those conversations, which need to be in camera. Councillor Tamora? Yeah, so how come when he says it, it sounds okay? Um, anyway, I just wanted to make the point too that, um, you know, I'd like to hear back from the tenant. I don't want to put her on the spot or one of our tenants there, but the one that, you know, Glenda that supplies the food there. I don't know, we don't know unless administration knows if she's prepared to open at any time or wants to open early or, you know, or if she can get staff or what the whole deal is. Um, I don't want it. That's not an issue at council, but if there's no desire there, if, if, if there's, if, if our main tenant or one of our tenants there, I gotta be careful with my wording, uh, can't realize any potential for opening early and wants to open with with the uh, opening of the arena, then you know maybe we should we should hear from that too. And I don't, it shouldn't be a political discussion, but it certainly would help me in understanding, you know, uh, wanting or the need to get open early for sure. If the matter is to be deferred until. Well, presumably um, could come back both at Committee of the Whole a week from now and again uh, on our regular agenda on August 4th. If that deferral is subject to receipt of additional information, 
is it clear, Mr. Virchow, what additional information you are going to collect and provide to council? And your worship, that's that's my question. Is is exactly what what would be what would be the request of council to uh, in the deferral? Like, what are we looking for? So, I've heard you know we can give you a different dollar amount from the difference of opening, say September twenty first to the October first date. Um, there's there's a dollar figure difference that we could provide. Um, whether or not um, the tenant. Um, would like to be open or not, I guess is the one question uh, Councillor Demota mentioned. Um, I know there's, you know, we don't charge rent to that tenant while the building is closed. And I know, you know, depending on whether school's open or not, that that is a customer base um, for that tenant. So um, that's a consideration. But again, these are, you know, fairly operational level stuff. Um, so I'm just not sure what exactly Council would want us to provide. And we could provide that, I guess, best would be committee the whole next week. Um, for further discussion for a decision on the following uh, council meeting after that and just yeah please let us know what what we could provide well let's try and do that now councillor demota and then councillor mcgrath yeah i didn't i'm retracting that request for the difference between the one week it's not important uh to me i, I think the the bigger picture is more important so that the september 21st to the october Fourth, unless anybody else wants that information, it's not relevant to me. Councillor McGrath? I'm not seeking any information from administration today in regards to anything mentioned. I'm looking for our in camera session to be complete uh, this afternoon, which has been hinted that there may be information provided to me to make a more informed decision on August 4th. Councillor Butler. Thank you. I, I think the question that I have raised, is there any revenue potential um, between now and the end of the year from reopening, uh, that would accrue from reopening the activity center? And that would have to include uh, the ice services. I respect we can't reopen the ice services without having the activity center open. So it seems to me that it should be reasonable to um, have a little bit clearer financial position without it being, our conversation becoming too operational as to can we not expect some offsetting revenue against the reported $70,000 expense? So you have that, Mr. Perchel? For myself, um, I am interested in what opportunities for revenue may be available from a reopening of the activity center. But I'm also interested in whether any of those activities are likely to generate revenue for the community as opposed to just the municipality. Um, I, I don't think that this is simply a question of looking at our internal cost benefit analysis. Um, but we, we do run facilities that benefit the economic well-being of the community generally. And if, if we are missing opportunities, I would like to know about it. If there are opportunities available, um, some sense of, of how they contribute to the economic health of the community would be important to me. I appreciate that probably most of those opportunities are related to the availability of the ice surface. Um, so you need not redo that work, but I presume that if there are weddings, they help um, with the economic recovery of the community in a broad sense. And, and I would really be interested in knowing um, what might be available in that regard, if that can be done. Your, your Worship, we do have some of that information, not probably not a, a great deal to a, a high degree of uh, of uh, reliability, but we, we would be able to give you some broad generalities. I, I appreciate that. Councillor Butler? Yeah, thank you for that. And I just wanted to support the view that um, while I didn't mention income for the community, I absolutely agree that needs to be part of the conversation. So thank you for bringing that up to your worship. 
there seems to be um, consensus, at least, that this matter come back, that it will be deferred from today's meeting. Um, do I have the support of council to say, put this on the agenda for the next committee of the whole and potentially also uh, two weeks from now for a decision on reopening of the activity center? See one thumbs up. Two, three, four. All right. I, I think oh, Mr. Butler is yeah. that a is that a thumb up or a, or a, a question you wish to pose? All right, Mr. Perchow. I, th I think uh, that that is a fair direction for you to take for today. Agenda item, sorry, let me just check. Um, before moving to agenda item 9.2, um, we've been at this for an hour and 50 minutes. It might be time for a brief recess um, for the convenience of council and our other attendees. Um, so I will give us, um, it is 3.20 by, by my watch, let's say, Eight minutes, 3.28, um, which might give us a real chance to be going again by 3.30. But I didn't say 3.30, I said 3.28. And uh, Councillor keller Ramphy, you have to be on your way? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Be safe. Thank All right, you. we will recess then um, for eight minutes, one exception. All right, I will uh, call this meeting back to order. We are at agenda item 9.2, a request for decision regarding CMHC seed funding for affordable housing units. Mr. Birchall. Um, Thank you, Worship. So this is just following the presentation that was provided on June 30th um, regarding this uh, grant application. So what we're looking for at this point is uh, for council to support us to uh, move forward with the grant application only um, and then administration would then begin to prepare uh, a borrowing bylaw for council consideration in, in a future date so what this does is position us to um, go for what we believe is a fairly good opportunity uh, for $150,000 of grant money from uh, CMHC conjunction with uh, part of that seed funding they call it is uh, uh, we borrow 100,000 and then we have $250,000 to move forward with um, continuing to prepare for the construction of our housing project on Kanawha and um, we certainly um, we've, we've made quite a bit of progress on that this year and um, having this funding the seed funding what it's intended to do is exactly what we're doing now is uh, preparing the actual site uh, for development and having all of our uh, permits and assessments in place and completed by uh, so that we are ready to make a decision and not um, push that down the road and, and it is $150,000 of, of support and as mentioned earlier is um, we'd like to proceed to continue to have this project as close to what's called shovel ready as possible and I guess the latest term is what shovel worthy, worthy. <laughs> whatever that might mean um, so that should grant funding come available, um, the business community in Jasper and the municipality aren't solely um, funding this project that sometimes during these um, difficult times in history that the federal government and provincial government do come forward with high profile grant funding um, opportunities that support business, small business, municipalities and highly visible as this one is on Connaught. Um, so we don't wanna miss that by um, taking advantage of this grant, 150,000 of free money and $100,000 loan, we can help continue to move this project forward to that space. So that's what we're looking for um, with the recommendations that are in front of council today. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Virchow regarding the request for decision? 
Coaster McGrath. Not a question, Mayor Arlen, just a comment that affordable housing is extremely important for our community, both to recover and to thrive once again. This seed funding is important in moving this project forward to create more affordable and accessible housing in Jasper and I'm in full support of it. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, indirectly related is a question that I believe Councillor Butler posed um, last time. This was before us, July 7th. And that is the relationship between this project and um, the position of the Capital Finance Authority with regard to debt limits. And uh, although it's not directly relevant to our decision today, it is important for this project. And I have not yet um, achieved that task, but I continue to work on, on getting answers for that. So just to let you know that I, I have not forgotten the importance of that question. I, I still have to make contact with um, officials that can, or uh, elected officials that can give us a clearer answer about whether changes might be made. But a question that I, I recognize is connected, but need not interfere with any decision we're going to make today. If there are no further questions, is um, sorry, Councillor Butler, go ahead or, or make a motion if, if you choose. Uh, that was uh, the reason I raised my hand. I'd um, happily. Um, make the motion can we consider it your worship to be one motion with three parts as outlined at the end of our agenda package in the list of recommendations or do you feel it's better to have three separate motions uh, i am certainly content uh, to have um, to have them bundled however if any Councillor uh, makes a request um, for separation, we can certainly do that, but I, I would not think that we need separate decisions on them. So if, if your motion encompasses all three uh, items in the recommendation, we will go with that and I, I just leave it to any councillor who, who believes that um, the question should be separate to, to raise that and we can do it. All right, well then I, I'll go ahead and make that motion. Um, it's a little awkward because the second point of the motion is um, that we pass the resolution. And the wording for the resolution is provided, so I think we consider we can consider um, all of that to be one motion. Um, would you like me to read it? I I am content that you not have to read that. Um, I can I can read it when I call the question if there is a requirement. Everybody has it on their on their screen, um, and your intent is to pass a motion consistent with the three bullet points of the recommendation. Uh, yes, that's correct, and the wording of the motion is also reflected in the second last page of our package. Correct. And then encompassed within that is the motion contained with the CMA within the CMHC package. Um, I don't know what page number that is, but it is the page headed resolution of Council of the Municipality of Jasper. So I'm making that motion at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Any debate? Councillor DeMota? Well, just to, to clarify some information for those that uh, might be listening or, or maybe hearing this for the first time and maybe and, and getting some understanding behind it. Um, the term that was thrown out there, the shovel worthiness uh, of the project and having potential funding dollars for it. Um, just to clarify, once again, that that is something that was made aware to us by our uh, mi uh, Minister of Municipal Affairs and we had to have that in order. Uh, at least in case that funding does come available or when it does come available, we have to be shovel worthy. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, if there is no further debate, um, I will call the question. The, the motion, if you wish to take a moment to look at it, is on page 36 of our agenda. Um, that is a draft motion from CMHC, which uh, is part of Councillor Butler's motion. So I'll, I'll give you just a moment if, if you wish to look at that. And then I will 
call the question. So Councillor Demota's eyes are still down reading. You ready? All right, I call the question, all in favor? There are none opposed, that is carried. And on that then, Mr. Furcho, administration requires nothing further from council at this time? Um, no, Your Worship, I'll be tracking you down probably for some signatures and then also uh, we've got some other paperwork we need you to sign as well, but I'll deal with that either tonight or tomorrow. Thank you. That takes us to agenda item 9.3. Uh, which is here by way of notice of motion uh, regarding S block paid parking fee structure. And Mr. Furcho, are you addressing that or are you going to uh, defer to Mr. Jones on that? Um, Your Worship, I'll introduce it and then I'll ask um, Mr. Jones to, to jump in here. So thanks to um, Thanks to Neil to, from preparing this information and as Council's aware and what we brought forward the last meeting was the fact that that S block parking lot is nearing completion now and um, Council did set the use, but then we've talked about a few different things on setting a fee structure um, for the, the, the parking lot. And so uh, Mr. Jones has done some research on how that's done in other communities and what we might want to consider for uh, Jasper and then also part of the discussion for today. I might want to talk about what we bring forward for uh, committee of the whole next week. Should that be required if there's further discussion for a decision on August the 4th? Um, and that way we can implement whatever that is. The parking lot is nearly um, completed. And um, we also talked about the other ball that's in the air here is whether we do uh, paid parking in town or not. And what the next thing that council will see is some vendors that offer paid parking um, opportunities um, and services and how they operate those. So we're gonna ask those types of companies to come and present at council, just so you see the different types of technology that's out there. So um, although that one is still a ways down the road, um, we just wanna be aware that that could be a decision in the future regarding any kind of paid parking structure in town. So we've talked about um, with this parking lot, if there is a fee or not a fee, how that impacts um, the value whether there's paid parking or not paid parking in town so when in our options we talk about a lower monthly rental fee possibly um, if there's no paid parking in town and a higher rate if there is paid parking in town just so there's a tiered approach to it um, possibly there might be a, a lower number first but um, Neil's done quite a bit of research and if council would like we, I can just get him present a little bit on this report um, on the numbers of that we're suggesting and then from that, maybe we get a little more information and we can talk to uh, council about what we come back with for next week for Committee of the Whole. So does council like a little brief on, on what uh, Mr. Jones has found in other communities? Certainly, he's prepared the report. He, he should speak to it. Okay, thanks. And then go ahead, Neil. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I was asked to uh, put together some figures with regards to um, uh, fees for this uh, new S block uh, parking lot. Uh, to get those figures, I uh, did a uh, research through the internet of available figures for uh, for parking lots in the area. Um, unfortunately, the, a lot of the communities don't uh, advertise those, those fees, so that there was a limited amount, but there was enough for me to work on. Uh, basically, I worked from uh, uh, Kelowna, public parking lot monthly fee of $100, uh, Red Deer public parking lot of a uh, monthly fee of 110. And then there was uh, the daily or the, the per hour fees from again, Kelowna, Red Deer, Calgary and Edmonton of uh, anything between 160 and $3.50. Uh, again, putting that against the municipal uh, storage lot fees, which are $306 per year, which equates to around about $25.50, which is a correction to what says on the report. I do apologize. That's a little bit of a mistake with regards to decimal pointing. Um, so it should be $25.50 per month. 
And then the operations department assessment of around about $450 per month to facilitate cost recovery on this facility. Um, Kelowna seemed uh, a logical step for me to use with regards to doing the figures because of it being a holiday town or tourist town. Um, and therefore I went with that figure. Um, the breakdown was a little bit of a, a roundabout, but uh, I, I thought it was important to give you some logic behind why I, I, I fell on the $150 a month fee. But basically, I based it on 10 hours a day, uh, averaging the per hour charges from 160, which, that were 163.50, which comes to $2.55, Monday to Friday, which worked out to about $127.50 for five days. And then I added $1 per hour for 20 hours over the weekend uh, because a lot of the, um, the uh, towns and cities, uh, they reduce the rate to $1 per hour. Um, uh, and I average it for, again for the 10 hours a day. Um, but I did include Sundays for that fee because some did and some didn't. So that comes $127.50 plus the $20, it's $147.50 per week. Uh, this would result, if you put all that then to uh, per month fees, to $639 or $7,670 per year. So I took, I, I, I I took the figures from the city of Cologne and saw that they were given around about 76.53% discount going by those figures. Uh, that's where we got to the $150 per month, uh, which works out to around about uh, $4.95 per day or $34.61 per day or $1,800 per year. And I thought that was, a, 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 a going by the daily figures and the weekly figures, I, was, I thought that was a, quite a, a fair and in my mind, and I, again, uh, um, my mind not, might not be the same as a business person, I thought that was a reasonable fee going by the figures I've seen uh, in the surrounding uh, municipalities. And I'm open to questions. If... Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, Councillor Demora. Well, whether uh, your mind, Mr. Jones, uh, through the mayor uh, operates, uh, you know, like a business person, I, I really appreciate the calculations and the meth, methodology behind that. So um, regardless of if that makes sense to a business person, um, I, I really enjoy, I, I enjoy listening to, to the process and, and thank you for, for going to that extent. And it makes sense to me and I uh, very much appreciate that. Councillor McGrath. I too really appreciate this report, Mr. Jones. Thank you very much. Um, it had all of the information I could possibly require and um, it was very well put together. So thank you very much for all of the hard work and attention you put into this. Councillor Butler. Thank you and thanks for this, Mr. Jones. I, I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first is uh, I wanna highlight the fourth bullet point where it says operations department assessment of $450 per month to facilitate cost recovery of this facility. Um, I don't, I'm not sure I really understand that because I mean, that, is that cost recovery over a period of time or what, what was the thinking there? And I, I realize it's not a number that you're proposing to use, but it is a comparator, but cost recovery normally um, is discussed in terms of, of time frame, you know, a 10 year cost recovery or, or what. And I wonder if you know any further, um, have any further information behind that particular number. Uh, your worship through to Councillor Butler. Um, I do apologize. Uh, that figure was uh, sent me through the, uh, by email th from the operations director and uh, I believe it is over a certain amount of years. I can dig up the email and, and uh, see how many years that is over, uh, but I haven't got the figures to hand and I'd be quite happy to um, furnish that if there's enough time between now and when the, uh, your meeting closes. Oh, well, thank you for that. And it doesn't need to be today. This is gonna come back. Um, and I think what we're exploring right now is what further information you, we might want. And I, I would like to see a little bit more build out there uh, because it, it, 
um, I think some sort of a cost recovery model, even if it is nothing more than a notional model, could help us uh, through this, though it's very likely simply to take us back to the recommended recommendation of 150. So we don't need that today, or I don't. Um, but what I would like to point out is I'd like to go back to comments that uh, Mayor Ireland made last week when we talked about this and with which I agreed, which was we have to make this decision around payment for parking in Block S within the context of our existing bylaw as well as enforcement of our existing bylaw. Um, if we implement a fee, a monthly fee for parking in this lot, and that is not accompanied by a change in the way we are um, regulating on-street parking, either by potentially a change in the bylaw, if that was needed, or by a change in our enforcement strategy, then of course we'll, we'll get nowhere because no one will pay to park in this parking lot if we um, basically allow them the freedom to park um, in the parking lot across the road nearer to home hardware or indeed on the street in um, the Stenwright Park or uh, uh, Stenwright Industrial Area or elsewhere. And so what I'm really interested in is the conversation about how uh, your department, Mr. Joan, feels that we would have to adjust our approach to enforcement of parking, either through wording the bylaw or through our um, enforcement strategy, if we were to begin charging for parking in this lot. You worship through to Councillor Butler. Um, I, your logic is, is sound. In my mind, we would need to have an enforcement outlook with regards to um, the commercial vehicles in town, I would suggest that um, instead of uh, diving straight into uh, changing a bylaw, which we would need to do with regards to normal commercial vehicles, because a lot of the bylaw sections within the traffic bylaw uh, uh, point to anything over 7.5 meters and in the, t in the downtown core as well. Um, I would suggest that we, um, whatever figure uh, the council uh, uh, lands on that we see what kind of uptake is taken. Um, I would be surprised that there would be a, quite a few people that would be interested in removing their equipment from the road and uh, uh, and using uh, that nice new little nice new lot that we have. So I would suggest uh, um, uh, uh, to see what the uptake is, and then see if there is a necessity to start changing the traffic by law for this one issue. Um, uh, I, again, we do monitor the um, commercial vehicles in town, but we are restricted to 7.5 meters in, in, in a, a large amount of cases, and not just because they've got uh, a livery on a, on a normal uh, van that's under 7.5 meters. Uh, some of the bylaws do kick in around about the 10 o'clock mark when we do not have a bylaw officer, so we do rely on complaints. So it would mean uh, adjusting uh, the shift pattern and then moving the officer that I have from the morning and, and dealing with the campus in town and then uh, moving him into a, a later shift that would deal with, with these commercial vehicles. Whether or not we do that uh, on an alternate basis or whether or not I, I put myself within the, sh the shift pattern away from what I am at the moment is something I could look into. But at the moment, I would uh, recommend seeing what the uptake is and seeing whether or not we have to um, uh, put in a, a specific uh, sections within the traffic by law to encourage commercial vehicles, uh, commercial vehicle owners to um, use that S-Block parking lot. Uh, hopefully, I've, I've understood your question. Sorry, Councillor Butler, I'm just giving you a chance to respond if you choose. Thank you. Um, let me leave it at that for now. I, I certainly appreciate what I take to be um, the implicit recommendation is that we take one things at a time, at a time, begin charging for parking, and then have a look at whether we need to adjust our bylaw. I, I think I can accept that. 
as being a fair recommendation. I'm still a little concerned um, about, well, I, I guess I'm wondering what our expectation is. Um, I, I believe our expectation is that we are hoping to um, locate and relocate um, existing commercial vehicles. And I think we, we know there are anything from buses used for um, various tours to um, uh, industrial trucks, dump trucks, all sorts of vehicles currently parked um, at no charge on either public lots or on the street. And we're hoping to see them move into this lot um, at a fair and reasonable charge. Um, I expect many of them simply won't because honestly, why would they? Though I guess what we're hearing from Mr. Jones is that he thinks that people will and that we should try this and then come back to the question of, of whether our bylaw is written adequately to encourage that response that we're hoping for. So I think I can accept that if that's a fair rec representation of the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Other questions for Mr. Jones? Mr. Furchill? Um, just the um, pro forma that Ops did, I just brought it up, Councillor Butler. It's a 20 year. Um, so the idea is that it, that cost recovery is the initial construction costs and putting away enough money for a resurfacing at the 20 year mark. That's what that dollar amount represents. Um, but again, it's, that is, you know, a lot of what we do in the municipality costs much more than what we recover. And obviously with all the other factors, that's probably not, it's just so that council had that number, not that it was going to be that useful. Um, the other side of the spectrum is the number that we charge for the RV storage, which is considerably lower as well. So it's balancing all of those. And, you know, as council mentioned before, the in-town uh, parking rate or not um, would, would reflect on the value here as well. So lots of sort of factors out there. Well, I appreciate that, even though, as you said, it's a notional amount and not, not a target. Um, it helps me to understand um, what real work cost recovery would look like, uh, not that any of us, I think, are, are really hoping to achieve full cost recovery. Thank you. I, I had a, well, I guess the same question, um, and I just need some clarity, Mr. Furcho. Um, so from the pro forma that you just referenced. Does that figure look at both operational and capital cost recovery over a 20 year period? That That's the number that you yeah, referenced? Yeah, so it, it's the capital cost recovery plus putting away enough money to resurface at 20 years so we don't have to debt finance that. That's all, not the operational side of it. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention to council too is um, when a development occurs in town and people pay into the parking authority, we've always known that that dollar amount was quite low, but we've had no way to really gauge what that dollar amount was. So I had some pretty good cost estimates when we looked at doing the parking lot beside Source for Sports in that green space that didn't actually go ahead when we were working with the uh, uh, downtown hostel. And so those numbers would have, was an estimate that would have been sort of best case scenario um, in terms of changing that number for that bylaw. Uh, but now that we've built this parking lot, I believe we do have a hard number of what a parking stall does cost. And that'll be something we'll come forward in the future with council as well as an adjustment on the offsite levies that are charged or the, uh, sorry, uh, the charges for the downtown parking authority when somebody builds something and they can't put a parking lot in at their development. Um, what's that dollar amount? And we knew it was low and it is considerably low. So that's something in the future as well. But now we do have a, an actual dollar value because we've built a parking lot recently to know what that number is per stall. Thank you. I have a, another question um, which relates to matters other than the fee. But whatever fee we select, how is that to be articulated? Um, do we need a, a new bylaw, a change of the existing bylaw? Um, what will be the, the format to be able to enforce 
that be whatever we choose to be? And um, will that also cover who is authorized to make application for a spot? So I, I know we've discussed that this should be for commercial use. Um, is that to be defined in any particular way? And again, is that going to be defined in the existing bylaw or some new bylaw? Uh, Neil, would you have an answer? That's a good question. It is a very good question. And uh, <laughs> I would have to do some research and to see what exactly that we would need to do on, on this particular storage lot. This, would, this one is uh, a new one for me, whether or not we're going uh, is administrated through um, uh, through the, the finance office and, uh, and build that way or whether or not it comes through as the storage lot fees come through uh, to me and, and I administrate it. Uh, that's something I'm, uh, to, to be brutally honest, uh, I'd have to look into. All right, that's that's fine. Again, it's only here for notice, and it's it's a related but somewhat peripheral question. So, I, I didn't necessarily anticipate a response today. But when this comes back to council, it would be nice if we had a clear plan of how all the pieces are going to fit together on this, including that that other um, challenging component that Councillor Butler raised about um, incentivizing or disincentivizing people so they actually make use of this paid parking. But all, all those can be addressed at a later date. I'm comfortable with that. Councillor DeMota? Yeah, if, uh, if the conversation on this topic is done for paid parking, I just had something to add for parking in general for us to consider. I was gonna bring it up in new business, but while we're talking about parking so I'll leave the opportunity for other councillors if they wanted to finish up on this or all right well the the uh, notice for request for decision is is to fix a fee so if there are not further questions with respect to that notice we can leave it and councillor demoted if you had a generalized question about parking I suppose it's as good now as at any time in the future well, not uh, not a question, but just an observation. Uh, seeing that Mr. Frucho said that we might have some uh, some uh, companies come to present to us on on other uh, paid parking initiatives. Uh, one thing that I did observe in uh, visiting Banff, which I, I thought that we should consider for Jasper down the road, and some probably talk with administration uh, throughout the winter and uh, to consider is that. Uh, there are larger parking lots within the downtown core have time limits on them as well. And I thought that was pretty interesting. In particular, one that's over by the public washroom. So there's a three hour parking limit in that area. And uh, there are eight to 10 stalls that are closest to the washroom that only have a half an hour parking on it. And I know that this would be a difficult thing to manage uh, with the resources that we have. But down the road, if you know, if we we're going to re-enhance our our uh, our bylaw um, department, this could be something that we can consider. And and the only reason I'm thinking that is because some people had presented the ideas about traffic flow in the community and I, and availability for parking in the community. And we want to promote you know a pedestrian uh, like downtown core, even you know um, promoting health in the community for walking and riding bikes. So this might deter some people from driving their vehicles to town and, and parking in those essential areas. I'm not saying all parking lots because there are some necessary for people to live and work within the community in, in those areas, but maybe take a look at, you know, where there's a lot of pressure and we can um, definitely increase the flow of, of traffic in and out of those parking lots uh, to help out, uh, you know, the, the pedestrian um, activity in the community and, and the economy. So just throwing it out there. Thank you for that. Uh, any further comments with respect to, to this issue? Um, it will come back, I believe, for decision on the August 4th meeting date. Is there any need for council to have this on the committee of a whole agenda between now and then? I don't see any clamor for that. So I, I would suggest um, 
Mr. Furcho and Mr. Jones, if you can provide some uh, answers to some of the questions raised today and bring that back for August 4th for a decision. That would be appreciated and we thank you for the report today. That takes us to agenda item 10, uh, correspondence for information, consideration or action. The letters that we received today um, related to our discussions under agenda item 9.1. Um, I drew attention to them at that time and there was some reference. Uh, unless uh, councillors have any other comments, um, I would say that all of that uh, correspondence has been received for information of council. None of it requests any other action other than I think what we have already encompassed in our deliberations today. Is there anything else arising? If not, then agenda item 11, other new business. Is there any other new business for council today? If not, councillor reports. Are there any reports for council? We do not have a list of upcoming events. Today, agenda item 13, are there any upcoming events um, which ought to be brought to the attention of council? All right, it appears not. Um, which takes us then to an in-camera item before I call for a motion to move in camera for those stalwarts um, who are interested in actually seeing us adjourn. If you let uh, Ms. Bird know, um, then she will send you a, a link and you can link back in um, once council comes out of our in-camera session back into open session, at which time we will adjourn. Again, I, I suspect that um, the nature of the in-camera discussions will not lead to further uh, public discussion on, on the topic of municipal reorganization. So I thank uh, everyone who has joined us from the public today, and I would invite any member of council to make a motion that council move in camera at 4.04 p.m. Councillor Demota, your motion. All in favor? There are none opposed. We will move in camera at this time and reconvene over Zoom. Um, could I say 4.15 just to give everybody a, a chance to get reorganized and Mr. Furcho, I think the, uh, have you already sent out a link to council? Uh, the Buddy? links and the password are all in your calendars. So if you just look at your okay. calendars to uh, your Outlook calendar, it's there. All right. Thank you all. We will reconvene um, momentarily for our in-camera session. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.